It's a question the Buddha has us ask ourselves every day. The question is this. Days and nights fly past, fly past. What am I doing right now? That's the big issue. Notice the question is not, who am I? That's a question the Buddha says that you, it's not worth asking. If you try to answer that question, you end up getting lost in what he calls a thicket of views, a jungle of views, a tangle of views, a fetter of views. So the problem is not that we don't know who we are. We don't know what we're doing. We want happiness. Everything we do, say, and think is motivated by the desire for happiness, the desire for well-being. And yet often what we do, say, and think leads to suffering. That's the real problem in life. That's precisely the problem that the Buddha proposes to to solve. He wants us to understand why we don't know what we're doing and how we can learn to do things skillfully. The reason we don't know what we're doing is because we're bewildered by suffering. Suffering is complex. doesn't come from one single cause. Causes from <clears throat> comes from many causes acting together. And the principle behind it is complex. It's not the case that you do something unskillful and lightning will strike out of the sky. Sometimes the Suffering you cause comes from actions that happened a long time ago, and you don't see the connections. So as he said, our normal, everyday reaction to suffering is twofold. On the one hand, we're bewildered by it, and secondly, we start searching. Who is there out there who knows a way out of the suffering? As children, we go immediately to our mothers, our fathers. We find there are some kinds of suffering they can help us with, and there are others that they can't. We go looking for other people. And because our quest or our search outside is based on bewilderment, it often leads us to the wrong people, to the wrong ideas of what we can do about suffering. We have to learn how to look very carefully at what we do and what comes about as a result of what we do. That's why the Buddha said the basic distinction in his teachings is the distinction between what's skillful and what's not. What are you doing that leads to well-being and what are you doing that leads to suffering? He said then we learn how to divide his thoughts into two types, skillful and unskillful. That was the beginning of getting on the right path. In other words, he learned how to look at his thoughts, not so much in terms of their content, but in terms of the causes behind them and where those causes lead. He looked at his thoughts as events in a causal pattern. This is why when we meditate, we learn how to step outside of our thoughts, focus on the breath. to create a foundation from which we can then look at other thoughts as they arise, to see them as events, so you don't simply get carried away in the stream of thoughts. You learn to look at them as events in a causal chain. And then from this basic distinction between skillful and unskillful, you derive the Four Noble Truths. 
skillful causes, unskillful causes. The results of skillful causes, i.e., an end of suffering, and the results of unskillful causes, continued suffering. Those are the four categories of the four truths. And this, the Buddha said, is precisely what we need to know if we're going to put an end to suffering. We have to learn how to look at our actions in these terms. On the one hand, the Four Noble Truths are like a framework for looking at the issues of your life. When anything comes up, ask yourself, is this suffering or is it the cause of suffering? Or am I on the path to the end? Is it part of the path to the end? Because the path is eightfold. And then when you know which category you're dealing with, then you have an idea what to do with it. If it's suffering, you have to learn how to comprehend it. It means watching it carefully to see how it arises, how it passes away, and to develop a sense of dispassion for it. Because often the things that we like turn out to be forms of suffering. But we've desensitized ourselves to the fact. If we learn how to look carefully, we begin to see, oh, these things that I like, these are really stressful. And you want to learn to see that, see them from that perspective, so you can develop a sense of dispassion toward them. Otherwise, you just keep on creating more suffering without realizing what you're doing. Once you realize that there's suffering, you look for what you're doing that's causing the suffering. What else arises in the mind at the same time as that suffering or stress? Particularly, look for craving. It can be sensual craving, craving for a state of becoming in the mind, or craving to see whatever becoming has come into the mind, to see it destroyed. Because that, too, leads to more kinds of becoming. That's one of the paradoxes in the Buddhist teachings. But if you recognize any of these kinds of craving, your duty is to abandon them, let them go. Now, this often goes against our old habits, because just as we often mistake stress for something that we actually like, we tend to see our forms of craving as our friends. We like them. We nourish them. We take them as our companions. But as the Buddha said, these things are like someone who's worked his way into our confidence, into our trust, and then someday plans to kill us. So you have to be very aware of these things. So when you recognize them, let them go. No matter how much you've liked them in the past, you have to realize, if I want to put an end to this suffering that I've been creating, I've got to learn how to change my habits. So you let these things go. As for the path, that's something you want to develop. Mindfulness is something you want to develop. Concentration. All the factors of the path. You don't simply watch them come and go. If you see that mindfulness has arisen, you want to maintain it. You want to develop it. If it's lapsed, you do what you can to reestablish it. Keep working at this. Bring it into being. This is a form of becoming, but it's the kind of becoming you need in order to get to the end of the path. Because as you learn how to understand the process of becoming through creating skillful states of becoming, you develop the sensitivity that you can ultimately let go of any kind of becoming. And finally, when you see suffering end, or see the, the ending of suffering, i.e. dispassion for the craving, you watch that. In other words, you're letting go and you're watching the letting go. You witness the letting go at the same time to see what happens. And when you learn how to look at your actions and look at your experience in this way, in terms of this framework and in terms of the duties that come from the framework, that's when you're on the path. You're practicing what's called appropriate attention 
In other words, looking at the really important issues. of what's happening in the present moment and what you need to do in response. Now, it's not the case that you see suffering once and comprehend it, and that's all you need to do. Your powers of comprehension are going to grow stronger as you develop the path. All these factors are really interrelated, and they're all skills that you develop. This is why the path is a gradual one. You need to Develop your sensitivity over time. Which is why the work putting into being skillful, not only as you're meditating, but also through the course of the day, is effort well spent, worthwhile work. You're not distracting yourself. from the unconditioned, you're actually sensitizing yourself to the area in your awareness where eventually the unconditioned will be revealed. As the Buddha said, you touch the deathless with the body. In other words, the same place where you're experiencing the body right now, that's where the deathless will be touched. The body itself is not the deathless, but that area of your awareness is where you will see, where you will touch the unconditioned. And the only way you can see it there is to sensitize yourself to the area through becoming more and more skillful with the way you breathe, the way you think, the way you deal with your feelings and perceptions. All these processes of fabrication are conditioned by ignorance. This is why paying attention to that simple question, what am I doing right now? It's not just a means for being heedful. That's one of the reasons the Buddha has you ask that question. But it's also directing you to the spot that you need to work on. In order to put an end to suffering. The spot where intention happens, the spot where the results of your intentions are experienced. You really want to become sensitive to these processes so that you can take them apart. So it's not a question of who you are, it's a question of what's doing, what are you doing. What are the results of what you're doing? How can you do it more skillfully? How do you apply the different duties of the Four Noble Truths so you get more and more skilled at them? Those are questions worth asking and worth finding an answer for. Because once you've fully understood the answer, fully mastered all the procedures needed to find that answer, you reach the end of questioning. You know true happiness, which was the reason you were you've been acting all along. And that's when all your ignorance will end. You may still not know the answers to a lot of other questions, but answering these questions. takes care of all the really important issues in life.